Hey everyone, hope you're well. I'm gearing up for a shoot tomorrow. It's a corporate event at Top Golf, and they wanted to capture some B-roll of the event and some MOS. So right now I am doing a shoulder rig that was um, on the package they wanted. Uh, shoulder mount, that sort of thing. So I'm setting up my FX3 on a shoulder mount and honestly I've never done shoulder work uh, with an FX3 so this is kind of a, a new thing for me and then I have a little director's monitor this is a Frankenstein build um, but it has a little 5 inch monitor sun hood gold mount on the bottom and then a little um, Hollyland Mars receiver but yeah um, I have a wooden camera um, director's monitor kit somewhere in my shop but I cannot find it. I spent about 45 minutes yesterday looking for it and I was just wasting time. It's probably buried somewhere deep. So I'm just going to make this work. Um, it's a little, I don't know. I don't know if it looks professional or if it just looks like a mess. Hopefully no one complains, but that's what I'm working with. Um, and then I do have the Hollyland Mars 4k enhanced as my viewing monitor so that way I'm sending signal over here to the director's monitor. Um, so that's kind of the package. Um, I do have my, I'll bring my tripod with me. So if we do some MOS and they want a steadier shot, we can just clip it to the tripod. Um, so I'll have that with me. So for a shoulder rig, um, this is pretty comfortable as it is. I'll show you kind of what it looks like in a minute here. And I've used shoulder rigs before with like a easy rig. Um, and that, that works out great. That does help a little bit, but I'm just not a big fan of the easy rig. Um, I think it's versatile for a lot of things, but for me, I feel like I'm constantly fighting with it um, to get it to where I like it. So I don't really use it as much. I have it just in case anyone specifically wants it for a shoot, um, if they want to rent it, or if they want me to operate with an easy rig, I have one. Um, but I end up using this thing a lot more. This is like a Cine Saddle knockoff. It's by a company called Focus Rat. And it's pretty much just a bean bag um, with a strap and you use it uh, to mount your camera. You can put your camera here in the middle, rest it, that sort of thing. Um, and the reason I went with this one versus a Cine Saddle is because it came in black. That's Honestly, the only reason. And um, I like using the combination of a shoulder rig and then this little cine saddle um, thing. I feel like it works really well and it takes a lot of the strain off of your arms uh, because you can kind of just rest your arms on the beanbag and then that's um, supporting a lot of the weight of the camera as well as your shoulder. So it's, it's a little bit more comfortable and then it's a little... Uh, more versatile as well. You can just take this off and cradle it on the bean bag, and that works out pretty well. So this is what the camera looks like just on my shoulder as like a shoulder mount. Um, very typical. I'm using a um, zoom lens. This is the Tamron 35 to 150, just to give me some zoom range um, on the shoulder. So this is a pretty typical look. Um, it's pretty balanced. I do have a, a gold mount on the back, and then I have the camera right over my shoulder. I have monitor extended out right here, and then I can articulate this kind of any direction I want. Um, so this is pretty normal operation, but, you know, after a while, your arms get a little tired. So that's where I like having the bean bag here, and I could just rest my arms on the actual uh, bag. And I'll show you what that looks like right now. So this is with the bean bag. Um, obviously, it's just a giant bean bag with strap. Um, it does have some pockets, so I can keep some accessories in there if I wanted to. Maybe a gold mount to fit in here if I need another battery. So um, this is kind of what it looks like. I'll show you what it looks like in combination with the um, the shoulder rig right now. So. This is what it looks like with the combination of both. And honestly, um, this feels pretty comfortable if you wanted to cradle the camera a little bit more. 
I know I'm pretty tall. I'm six foot one. So I know oftentimes if it's on my shoulder, I am kind of pointing down quite a bit um, at people. So sometimes I like cradling the camera like this. And this feels pretty comfortable. You can kind of um, do it like this. Um, but if you want to do the more shoulder mount option, you can. So this is way more comfortable with the bean bag. Um, it kind of takes the strain off of you holding your arms up and you kind of just rest it here on the bean bag. And then it distributes the weight more around your shoulder. Um, so I kind of like this a lot more. And I feel like I'm uh, a little bit more steady with my shots too. Um, sometimes if I'm changing the zoo range and I don't have the bean bag, it kind of starts to wobble a little bit. Um, so I can definitely keep a smoother shot and adjust camera settings at the same time, having the bean bag to help support. So yeah, this is what I like doing. Um, but obviously everyone's a little different. This might not work for everyone, or this might be uncomfortable to some people. And obviously this is where you would benefit from the easy rig, just being able to go high and then go low, um, go medium, go high and easy operation. I can see why people like the easy rig quite a bit. I just know for me, it's not, I feel like I'm always fighting this thing, fighting the tension. It's getting in my way. Cause you, you do have to operate it from the side as opposed to from the front, uh, from the back like this. So, um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're both tools. I have both, I'll use both, but for this job tomorrow, I'm going to go with the other combination and the, the city saddle. As far as audio, I'm using these little Pico mics. Um, so I'm running four channels of audio with the FX three. I have channel one and two, um, going in with the shotgun microphone and that's going in XLR one and then channels, uh, three and four. I have on these uh, Pico mics going through the little eighth inch. But um, yeah, these are pretty nice. We're gonna use these for the MOS. Um, you can literally just take off one of these little clip mics and clip it onto someone. The actual mic is on this small little clip and then the other part tucks underneath the shirt. So literally this is the only part you see. I'll show you what it looks like here in a minute. So here's the actual little Pico mic and you can put it in your shirt just like that. And then it's very small profile. Um, obviously it's a little, I probably wouldn't want the microphone position right there on my shirt, but typically you want it somewhere in this region. But if someone's wearing a button up shirt, you know, it's easy just to clip it in and clip it out. Um, so that way it's very discreet. You can barely even tell someone's wearing a microphone as opposed to some of the other microphones, like even the Rhodes and the DJI's, the footprint is a lot bigger, it ends up looking like that. And it's, that's just not, um, as nice as these Pico mics, um, which end up looking a lot smaller profile. So yeah, this is what we'll use for the MOS. We'll just have the, the director or producer just clip the microphone onto each person. And if they want to have two people at the same time, we have two channels of the Pico mic. So one can go on each person and then we can control. I can change a few settings on the camera and control each level independently. So I arrived onto location and I got my gear uh, all ready and prepped and built. This was a corporate event. It was just getting B-roll and MOS men on the street interviews. So they didn't want us to stage a whole lot of footage um, besides the interviews. They just wanted us to be more of like a fly on the wall. And um, even though we did have a bunch of equipment, we tried to set up everything in, in the corner and then just kind of take over what we need. So this, this setup was a little bit of an overkill for what we were actually doing, but it was nice being able to have the right equipment that I wanted to use. 
I'm not going to show too much of the actual footage. I'll, I just put together a little sequence that you guys can see here in a minute. But this was kind of the vibe of the whole night. It was just trying to get good B-roll coverage mostly of the event. Lots of smiles, laughter, that sort of thing. Um, very typical B-roll coverage. But this is kind of what it looked like operating from my shoulder. And I was using a zoom lens, the Tamron 35 to 150. And it was nice just being able to to be on the telephoto end of the range and be able to pick off shots. And this is where the shoulder rig really helped um, keep the camera very steady. Um, I know I could have used like a monopod, but I feel like I'm a little bit slower with the monopod. And sometimes it's awkward getting into tight spaces and whatnot um, with the monopod. And I feel like I can just get a pick off a lot more shots with the shoulder rig, just having it on my shoulder. I can just walk around wherever I need and not not be tied to a tripod or a monopod. And this is where the the easy rig would be a little bit awkward in this environment, just having a big setup, you know, a big crane coming off the back, and then just I feel like I would get a lot of weird looks. So this felt almost natural. I got a few looks from people, just kind of like, what are you doing? But it wasn't anything too crazy. If I had the easy rig on, I would definitely get some weird looks and just people just curious, you know, about what I'm wearing and what I'm doing. And it's just adds a whole nother element to the production where the shoulder rig is just a little bit more incognito. So this was a pretty easy gig. Not every job I do is going to be super hectic and chaotic. This was just very straightforward, which is nice to get a little bit of a break on some shoots and not have them be all over the place. So I'll take these kinds of jobs all the time just to change it up a little bit. Um, they're not as creative. It's more of like event coverage, but um, you know, it, it definitely helps. But yeah, could I have easily ran around with gimbal and just got footage? Yeah, that would have done the job as well. But honestly, I like the ability of being able to be on a telephoto lens and be able to pick off shots in the corner and just get, you know, go from tight to wide to medium, just being able to quickly make those changes. I know with a gimbal, I've seen lots of people shoot on a telephoto lens and they're just better at it than I am. I, I'm just not that good or experienced with shooting, you know, on a tight lens um, on a gimbal. I just can't keep things in focus. I just can't keep things centered. I just always feel like it's a little weird. Um, but that's just me. I'm not saying you couldn't do the same thing with a gimbal. It's just, this was my preference. And that's the great thing about video production is you have to do what's, what works best for you. There's a million ways to do one thing, but you just have to find the things that work for you and what you actually enjoy doing. And that's kind of where I'm at right now is just I like filming a certain way, and this is the way I do it. Even though there's a ton of other ways you can do it, a ton of other options, this is this is what works best for me. But yeah, feel free to leave any feedback in the comments. I always enjoy reading the comments and seeing what other people would have done in this in a similar situation. And I always feel like I'm I'm able to learn something new um, by your guys' suggestion. So definitely feel free to leave, leave some, um, feedback in the comments. So wrapped up at Top Calls, getting the van packed right now um yeah it was good just a quick corporate job so it's the following morning after the shoot last night uh the top golf thing i have to get the cart out of the van so i can repack it i have a shoot in a few days and it's a multi-cam shoot so i need to get this stuff out so i can repack so yeah this was my setup for shooting b-roll 
and interview stuff uh, last night and just keeping it very simple. I mean, I don't have Pelican cases um, on the cart. I, I know some people will cringe seeing, you know, monitors and lights and cameras just without cases, but I feel like it's pretty safe on the cart um, as long as I don't tip the cart over or something. Like, I don't really see stuff getting super damaged. And I like the ability of being able to work really quickly and not have to build anything on on set. That just makes my life a little bit easier. So, you know, I, I have the the combo stand that we're using for the light, connect the light, put a battery on it. And then I have um, the quick release softbox, the Aperture Light Dome Mini 3 ready to go. I have a tripod. I do have my uh, 5D Mark II in a backpack, but I could easily just put that on the shelf and not have to bring the backpack, but I had space, so I thought, why not? Then I had my Cine saddle. Here I have my shoulder rig in the middle, and it's kind of being sandwiched in between these two uh, bags. And then that was my gimbal setup. Um, it's already built with camera attached and monitor, and I just pull it out. I can put it on here rebalance and then good to go so I am all about being efficient and I one of my biggest pet peeves is taking an hour to build something on a shoot or taking 20 minutes to build a camera I just feel like that's such a waste of time um, when you can already have it built and then you just roll up to set I feel like there's so many other things you need to focus on rather than building a camera and I know that's you know, some shoots, that's what you do. But I, I know for one-man band type stuff, this is efficient for me. And just having everything ready to go. I had an XLR cable. If I needed to do a quick boom, I have the boom microphone under there. Um, so yeah, it's just all about having the right tools and not having to think about anything else uh, besides just getting the shot. Now, this is what works for me not it won't work for everyone some people don't like having cameras and stuff out of cases um, but this this is what works for me and it's fast and I can get in and out and not spend time you know rigging and de-rigging and all that so yeah thanks so much for watching guys I appreciate it and I'll catch you in the next one